Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Robin Lewis. I'm a naturopathic physician practicing here in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And today I wanna to talk to you about something I feel like a lot of us can relate to, and that is how our emotions, more specifically how stress, can impact our digestion and the overall health of our gut. So today I wanna to break down for you why this is happening, how this is happening. How does something like stress, which seems pretty disconnected, relate back to the digestive tract? This relationship between our brain and our gut is called the gut-brain axis, and it is a bi-directional relationship. So what that means is your brain can impact your gut and your gut can impact your brain. So this is why when we're having a lot of tummy troubles, everything's really inflamed, we can be more prone to things like anxiety, depression, brain fog, things like that. And certainly the same can happen in reverse. So stress can start to upset and inflame your digestive tract. It's usually doing this through two main mechanisms. So I'm going to briefly explain those two systems to you. So define a couple things before we get into it, because these two systems will be used to explain a lot of the why behind stress influencing your gut. The first thing that I need to define for you is the gut microbiome. This is referring to all of the different bugs that live inside of your gut. So this can be bacteria, viruses, parasites, fungi. Yeah, all of those things can exist inside of your gut and realistically should exist inside of your gut. The thing is, there can be a healthy microbiome that has a lot of really beneficial bacteria and things like that, or we can have an unhealthy microbiome where it's full of a lot more like disease promoting bugs. Depending on those two scenarios, you can have a thriving gut or a not so thriving gut. So a lot of this influence of stress is affecting our gut health through the microbiome. So that's really important to understand and it's gonna help explain a couple things that can happen as a consequence of stress. The second thing that I need to explain for you is the two modes of our autonomic nervous system. So this is really gonna also help explain a lot of things. We have our rest mode, which is called our parasympathetic mode. So this is really the mode in which we're feeling nice and relaxed, we're having an easy time digesting things, you're calm, cool, collected. And then we have our fight or flight mode, which is our sympathetic mode. This is going to pump adrenaline, it's gonna get you really revved up, it's going to direct blood flow away from your digestive tract. So as you can kind of imagine, that's not a great thing if you want that area to work really well. So this mode is really what's pulling away from your digestion. So it's considered less healthy for something like digestion. You don't wanna be super duper revved up when you're going to sit down for a meal sort of thing. So without further ado, let's jump into the three main reasons stress is affecting your gut. The first thing is when we're stressed, we are not releasing digestive juices like we should. So this includes things like digestive juices released from our pancreas, stomach acid, things released from our gallbladder. All of these sort of digestive juices release better when we are in a relaxed state. Stress will suppress the release of these things. And so the problem with this is most of us are not relaxing before we consume our food. We might be eating in a hurry, on a quick break, on the road. We're not fully unwound before we start consuming food and that is going to impede your ability to break down protein, fat, carbohydrates, but also the beautiful vitamins and minerals that are mixed inside of that food. All of these things need to be fully broken down into their smallest components before they're absorbed. So if you're not breaking down those things appropriately, you're probably not absorbing them appropriately. And so you might be eating all of the right things with all of the nutrition, but if you're not breaking it down and it's not getting absorbed, you just have really lovely looking stool. So this is a really big factor and this is why a lot of people when they're stressed out will notice that food just feels like it sits. It just sits in your tummy. It doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. You're maybe getting full really easily. 
that's because this whole process is getting slowed down. When you're stressed, the priority is not digestion. Furthermore, more specific to stomach acid, as you can imagine, it's kind of in the name, acid creates a more acidic environment. So when you're not releasing the same amount of it, the acidity of your gut, your intestines, things like that will change. Another reason this is super important is because certain vitamins like B12 need a strong amount of stomach acid in order for them to get properly absorbed. But what this change in acidity will also do is it'll alter your gut microbiome. So you can think of the microbiome as kind of like a war zone. All of these different species are competing for space. And depending on the environment, you can kind of stack the odds in one bug's favor versus the other. So acidity is very important for certain bugs to thrive and others to die off. So if you start altering the acidity of the digestive tract, you will start to alter the bugs that live in that environment. So this is a huge issue with something called SIBO, which stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. What can happen is the bugs that normally wouldn't be able to exist higher up in the digestive tract because of stomach acid are now allowed to come up further because now there's an environment that is more favorable for them. And these bacteria, when they migrate up the digestive tract, will create a ton of discomfort for people. So these are the kind of people who get a lot of bloating, a lot of gas. It's because bugs that produce a lot of gas are existing in bigger populations and higher up in the digestive tract. And one of the main reasons that can develop is low stomach acid. The second way stress can impact your gut is through something like inflammation. And so inflammation can increase in response to stress. And one of the known ways this is happening is through release of something called adrenaline. So this is things like epinephrine, norepinephrine, catecholamines, regardless, your adrenaline hormones will get released in response to a sympathetic activation. So when you're in that sympathetic mode, that fight or flight mode, you're releasing more adrenaline. Adrenaline is inflammatory to the gut. So in general, this is not going to lead to a nice anti-inflammatory environment that promotes the growth of good bugs. What this is also going to do is it's going to flare any pre-existing conditions of the gut that you might have. A really good example of this is stomach ulcers. Ulcers are an inflammatory condition. More specifically, what they are is an erosion of the lining of your digestive tract. So in addition to inflammation, how this can also happen in response to stress is the cells that release mucus to produce protect the stomach lining, the intestinal lining against stomach acid, that layer gets thinner and thinner in response to stress. We stop releasing as much mucus, so we stop coating the entire wall of the stomach and intestines, and therefore there is less of a barrier against stomach acid. And that acid will just eat away at the lining of your stomach, and then boom, you have a stomach ulcer. This is also why things like inflammatory bowel disease, so Crohn's and colitis, will also flare when you're stressed. It is an inflammatory condition of the gut. So your inflammatory symptoms, like really severe abdominal pain and diarrhea, will flare with stress. It's creating more inflammation, and in those type of conditions, you wanna calm the inflammation down. Now you don't need to have stomach ulcers or disease of the bowels in order to feel this. So usually for someone who doesn't have these really more severe conditions, you will experience this as maybe milder loosening of the stools or discomfort. But either way, the area is inflamed and irritated because your stress is out of control. All right, so the last thing that I wanna mention is how our stress influences the immune system of the gut. So interestingly enough, 70% of our immune system is found inside of our gut. 
A lot of this has to do with the microbiome, certain immune complexes that are found in the gut. But either way, if the microbiome isn't doing well, or if the gut isn't doing well, neither is your immune system. So of course we can take this into a broader context of allergies as a whole, but to keep it more specific to your digestion, this will worsen things like food allergies. So food allergies correlate very well with stress and food sensitivities, which are a lower grade reaction to foods, not like a peanut allergy where your face is going to blow up, but like bloating, constipation, diarrhea, irritation, food sensitivities, those can also be impacted by stress because both allergies and sensitivities relate back to the immune system. If you want to learn a little bit more about that, I talk about this in a separate video that goes over the difference between celiac disease, which is a gluten allergy versus a gluten sensitivity. So those are two different topics and I really elaborate on what the differences are in that video, but nonetheless, both are flared by stress. One of the main reasons that something like stress can lead to food allergies or food sensitivities is through something called leaky gut. This is exactly how it sounds. The integrity of your gut is lost. Why this is an issue is because now you will start letting things in before they're completely broken down. What happens when you've lost the integrity of your gut is larger chunks of food will start getting in and your immune system isn't used to seeing that. It won't recognize it immediately as food and it might mount more of an immune reaction to it. So again, allergies and sensitivities are an immune reaction. So if we're creating this situation where your immune system's constantly thinking, is this food, is this allergy, is this food, is this allergy, it's more likely to react inappropriately to food and therefore creating more sensitive symptoms, more bloating, more diarrhea, more constipation, whatever is your symptom of a food sensitivity, for example, and it can look very different from person to person, those symptoms will get worse when you're stressed because you're mounting more of a reaction and this is more in the case of chronic stress, but nonetheless, it will weaken the integrity of your gut and these things will get worse. All right, so that's it. I wanted to keep it super short. First off, stress will impede your ability to absorb nutrients. Second off, it'll create a lot of local inflammation. And third off, it'll make you much more sensitive to food. You will develop more food allergies and more food sensitivities. Of course, there's always more I could go into. We could talk about this topic for days and days and days. The gut brain axis is super interesting, but those are at least three main reasons why the average person might get a worsening of their digestion and the health of their gut through stress. So thank you guys so much for listening. If you have any questions, please comment them below and I will talk to you soon.